Now, next up, we will be hearing The Yellow Wallpaper by Charlotte Perkins Gilman, which is a dramatic interpretation performed by Issa Shapland. Now, dramatic interpretation is when competitors perform selections on topics of serious social matter, focusing on portraying the realistic emotional journey of their characters. Issa Shapland is a junior, and one fun fact about her is that she loves to surf and dive. Let's hear it for Issa. Hi, thank you, Rosalie. That was amazing. I loved your ending. Um, my piece is called The Yellow Wallpaper, as she said. It is about a woman in the 1800s who is locked in the attic and starts to see some things. <clears throat> it is very seldom that ordinary people such as and myself secure ancestral homes for the summer. Still, I will proudly declare that there is something about this house, else why would it be let so cheaply? And why would it have stood so long untenanted? John laughs at me, of course, but one expects that in marriage. John is a physician, and perhaps, I would not say it to a living soul, of course, but perhaps that is the one reason I do not get well faster. <laughs> you see, he does not believe I'm sick. And what can one do? If a physician of high standing and one's own husband assures that there was nothing the matter with one but a temporary nervous depression, what can one do? So I take the phosphates and the phosphites and tonics and journeys and air and exercise and I'm absolutely forbidden to work until I'm well again. Personally, I disagree with his ideas. I believe that congenial work with excitement and change would do me good. But John says the very worst thing I can do is think of my condition. And I confess, it always makes me feel bad. So, so I will talk about the house. It's the most beautiful place. Uh, it's quite lonely, th three miles from the village. It reminds me of England for there are hedges and walls and gates that lock. And, and there's the most beautiful garden. I've never seen such a garden, large and shady, lined with grape covered arbors with seats under them. And there were greenhouses too, but I'm afraid they're all broken now. Anyway, there's something strange about the house. I can feel it. I even said so to John one moonlight evening, but he is practical in the extreme. John has no patience with superstition and scoffs openly at the talk of things not to be felt and seen and put down in figures. To be honest, I get unreasonably angry with him sometimes. I think it is due to this nervous condition. John says, if I ever feel such emotion, I have neglected proper self-control. <laughs> so I take pains to control myself before him at least. And that makes me very tired. He's very careful and loving and I feel ungrateful not to value it more. He said we came here solely on my account that I was to have the perfect rest and all the air I could get. So as you can see, we took the room at the top of the house. It's a large and airy room with windows that look always air and sunshine galore. It was a nursery and then a playground and then a gymnasium I should judge for the windows are barred for little children. It stripped off the wallpaper in great patches all around the head of my bed, exactly as far as I can reach. I've never seen worse paper in my life. It's dull enough to confuse the eye in following pronounced enough to constantly irritate. And when you follow the lame on certain curves for a little distance, they, they suddenly commit suicide, plunge off at outrageous angles and destroy themselves. The color is repellent, almost revolting. And the unclean yellow is strangely faded by the sunlight. No wonder the children tore it so. I should hate it myself if I had to live here long. Um, John is away all day and even some nights when his cases are serious. <laughs> I'm glad my case isn't serious, though it is dreadfully depressing. Of course, it is only nervousness, but 
one would not be one would not believe what trouble it is to do what little I'm able to dress and entertain and order things. John does not know how much I really suffer. He knows there's no reason to suffer and that satisfies him. The wallpaper, as I said before, is torn off in spots. Uh, the floor is scratched and gouged and splintered. And this great heavy bed is uh, <clears throat> nailed down, I believe. I've never seen such ravages as the children have made here. Also, there's a very funny mark low down on the wall around the Namat board. It looks as if it had been rubbed over and over. I wonder who did it and what for. Of course, I don't mind any of it, only the paper. In places where it isn't faded and the sun is just so, I can see a strange, provoking, formless sort of figure that seems to sulk about behind that silly and conspicuous front design. And that I know John would think is absurd. Thank you. Um.